Hi, everyone, and welcome to another Talk Insomnia episode where Marina is guesting. Welcome. Thank you. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, uh, uh, so so glad you could make it. And, and just tell the community a little, little bit about yourself. Well, I'm Marina. I'm from the Netherlands, and I found your channel in the beginning of February when I was looking for solutions for my trouble sleeping. So, Very glad you did. And we'll talk... Uh, uh, in this episode specifically about this, what you what we have what we call somniphobia. Um, but uh, tell me, was that was that actually what it started like for you, or what what was what what happened? Well, I already had anxiety my whole life, like twenty years already. So it just manifested in different things. But basically, it was uh, uh, the fear of loss of control. And this time it, it just started with a random thought. I never had trouble sleeping or anything. And I was just laying in bed and I was thinking, um, it's kind of weird. Like I am like going unconscious and never thought about it. And all of a sudden this random thought was popping up. And the first two nights, I, it didn't really do anything. It was just a random thought. And then I f fell asleep. And then every day it became more and more. And I, and I, I, I thought more about it. And then it, really started to uh, uh, scare me actually to fall asleep and lose control because that's the, the main uh, fear I had my whole life. And then it, it got bigger and bigger and then I didn't want to sleep anymore. And then my mind was waiting when I would fall asleep um, because it, it wanted to maintain that control, right? So um, yeah, and then the insomnia started with it. So basically I didn't really have insomnia, but the somniphobia, uh started to be insomnia as well so that was the problem absolutely <laughs> and uh you know i uh i remember of course and, and by the way we should we should uh i should share people uh, with people that you and i worked together during that the free trial of bedtime so so we worked quite a bit there i didn't quite understand that that was actually how it started but for people that are like what are, what are they talking about what's somniphobia uh, the way i put it is like it's when you basically have started becoming afraid of like the process of falling asleep or afraid of falling asleep. And that's, that's how you would describe it too. Exactly. Yeah. It's like, um, I think it's all about losing control. So it's basically being scared of that moment you fall, uh, unconscious. Basically Absolutely. That's, uh, that's... And, and I, I just want to share one thing real briefly that, uh, the first time somebody said this, it was like on a comment on the YouTube channel. And I sort of was like, not dismissing it, like, but I was like, no, there's no such thing. It's just, you just have insomnia, you're just afraid of waking up later on. But it is, I realized it is a thing of its own. And uh, so, but then, but then you had this kind of fear of losing control and falling asleep, but then that kind of developed into more insomnia. Then you became afraid of like not sleeping too, correct? Yes, because I was so uh, becoming so scared of falling asleep that I didn't fall asleep anymore because I was so hyper aroused. You call it hyper arousal, right? That like I just couldn't fall asleep. Like I was so hyper aware and so anxious that I just couldn't fall asleep. Um, and after a few nights, I was starting to worry like, oh, this is not good because I have to sleep. Right? Um, and then I didn't really have it that long until I found you. So that's a good thing but um yeah um and then after a few days i was like oh i need to do something about this because i need to sleep um so i tried magnesium and uh coffee all kinds of things but it didn't didn't really work so yeah after a week i really started to panic already <laughs> so I, I i already had two problems at that moment so I was scared to sleep, but I had to sleep as well. And then I was worried about not sleeping. And so, yeah, it was a whole thing. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, I'm, I'm also glad you came across, uh, you know, my channel early here. And so you had, again, you had those both things, go, both things happening. And when you started, uh, you know, working with bedtime with the app there, all that teaching was really towards like insomnia, but yeah. Did, did you find that helpful or were you still thinking a lot about the somniphobia or what happened after that? Yeah, it, sh it shifted back and forth 
actually between more being worried about not sleeping and then being worried about sleeping itself. But it did really help the CBTI uh, steps. I, I did follow them and it did made it make it did make it better. And you just calm me down, like you're not going crazy, you're not going into psychosis, you're not going to die. Such things really help to calm the first, like really panic down because I was really like out of it. Like I was not mentally <laughs> there anymore. Like I was really, um, yeah, I really thought I was going crazy. So, but that really helped. And I in implemented the, the, the CBTI as well for the insomnia. So then it really helped because I was feeling like um, I was sometimes I was so sleepy that I didn't have the the time to think about being afraid of us falling asleep because I had to um, how do you call that um, that, that you have to take window. the time yeah. yeah sleep window yeah exactly I I did that and then um, it helped because I was so sleepy sleepy I couldn't I just couldn't think about it. And and uh, by the way, was it a that to think, was it a big shift for you that you you had spent quite a lot of time in bed and then it was quite a, a, a lot less in bed? Was it a big change for you? Yeah, well, I, sometimes I was so tired that I wanted to go to bed, but I didn't because I wanted to follow steps. Um, but no, actually, it helped me a bit because then I like I knew what to do. And then, yeah, that I, I I didn't really think about it that much anymore after a while. So, absolutely, and I think for for just anyone who tunes in there, I think both can be really helpful. Like spending a little bit less time, kind of trying to sleep, and but also education. I think that helps more than anything to just know that, like you said, I'm not going crazy. Nothing strange or unusual. But then that said, so. Um, we we talked a lot about both like the somniphobia and insomnia, but did you find that they sort of like both of them sort of got better as you learned more, or is it one got better before the other one, or what happened? That's a, that's a good question. Um, I think first my my the insomnia got better first because I started sleeping more hours. I don't think really think I had really bad insomnia in the first place because I had that paradoxical insomnia going on that I thought I was not asleep, but actually the time, like time traveling and stuff and vivid dreams. So I knew I slept, but it was just in my mind, like, oh, I'm so sleep deprived. I'm not sleeping, but I was sleeping actually. So yeah, um, that got better first, I think. Yeah, first I got more hours. Well, not the hours weren't really important, of course, but I got better sleep first and then, the somniphobia got better also. But basically I have to tell you, it comes and goes still, like the, that thought still comes and goes. I still have it sometimes. Sometimes it's completely gone and sometimes it's back, but I don't give it that much attention anymore. So I, I have the thought, but I then, I still fall asleep anyway, so. Exactly, exactly. I, I, I mean, it's, uh, this somniphobia, I think, is a little bit similar to like that when people have those hyper jerks or just like they become aware of like, oh, I'm about to fall asleep and that wakes you up in that the, the, the jerks or that thought may not go away. But then you realize that, oh, it's just a thought. It's it's not it doesn't bother you so much. And then it kind of allows sleep to happen. Is that sort of what what you're experiencing? Yeah. And, and actually totally accepting it is the first thing, because right before I found you, I was, it was really hard for me to accept it. And I only had it for two weeks and I already was <laughs> totally panicking and totally, but I was so fighting hard against it. I didn't want it. I, I wanted it to go away, but then it, it made it worse actually. So um, at one point, I, I think I told you as well that, that I was just like, well, telling my mind, well, then I'm going to die, then I'm going to crazy, I can't do anything. And then it started to getting better because I just accepted it totally. Exactly. And, and that can, let's stay on that one for a second, which is like, <clears throat> I, I try to teach that often, that um, kind of imagine the worst case scenario and, and say, I can't control it, then things get better. But oftentimes people are like, how can I do that? That's like, I can't imagine something like that. But, but you still did. Like, any thoughts for somebody who... Is in your, in your spot or? 
Well, you told me, and I think I saw Michelle that helped a lot, by the way, too, because I talked to her throughout that those uh, periods as well. So that helped a lot. And when I saw her, I was like, oh yeah, I just really need to welcome it in. And the first time I saw her saying that, I was like, what are you talking about? Like, how can I welcome it? It's just so awful. And I will say it needs kind of practice because you can do it like right away, like, oh, come in, it's fine. It's really a process. Like in the beginning, it's not fun at all. Like I was laying in bed crying, like I need to welcome this. <laughs> and it was so overwhelming, but like over time, it gets less and less, the, the less energy you give it, the less it, it, it like affects you. Yeah, exactly. That's just a, a good answer that I, I you know, people who hear this will be looking for the like what can i do and then you say welcome it like how can i do that but yeah it's not not that something you can do like that but you can take small steps to it and then it gets a little easier as you do that yeah the thing is you can't really do anything about it to get it like <laughs> let it go that's the thing that was the thing that makes you um being stuck in it because if you keep like i have to find an find a solution I, I want to get rid of it then it stays longer that's the thing so that first start, step you really need to be curious uh curious yeah. uh courageous that's the courageous word. yes courageous <laughs> yes. Yeah, curious. And, and like one thing that i uh, you know think of in the context of this somniphobia is that w when the brain is sort of in a state of being a little bit scared uh you know mm. all kinds of things can appear like a threat to it and i what are some other things people tell me like, uh, oh, like like what you said, for example, that time just skips ahead, that can seem really scary, or I have energy during the day, that's, a lot of things can seem scary, right, when you're in this state. Well, I found the whole sleeping in general, everything was weird, <laughs> like I didn't understand life anymore, like I was so in it, I didn't, like sleeping felt like alien to me. Like it was so weird, like you're going in to bed and you're gone, like where am I? Like all those weird thoughts, like so so deep into it, like thinking so deep into sleeping. Um, and of course the hyper arousal and the weird vivid dreams, it made it all even more scary. But then you uh, explain it to me and I talked to Michelle a lot. Um, so every time I got those things, I was like, oh, I now know what it is. And I, I, I can't do anything else than accept it. And then over time, it got less and less and less. So. Absolutely. It's always but the key. Yeah. That first step is really the, the hardest to really yeah. accept it. I mean, yeah. let it be there. That's really hard because you told me many times, just accept it. Be, like that thought is not going to go like for, it, for a while now. And I was like, oh, no, how can I accept it? How can I do this? Right. But yeah after a while it really gets less and less as long as you don't give it energy so I, it's, it's so helpful and i think uh just my on my kind of like concluding remarks here if you will is that i think it's so important to talk about this because i've heard from maybe and i will say that uh, i think i told you this too that i've heard from several people who, who has expressed this somniphobia but not a whole bunch of people but i've heard it from several people but just that the fact that you know, it's come up several times means that there are probably many, many people who have it and just like talking about it, knowing that's not uncommon is so helpful. So those are kind of my concluding thoughts and 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 what, what are your kind of like thoughts for somebody that has this or general thoughts? Well, they're definitely not alone, but I think some people don't dare to say they have it because it's kind of weird. Like when I told other people I have, I have fear of falling asleep, they were like, how can you be scared of falling asleep like that's such a normal thing so yeah i think that's why people don't really talk about it and yeah my tips are like yeah it's not it's not really what they what you want to hear at that moment but as long as you really accept it then it's gonna go uh, well it's maybe it's not gonna go but it won't affect you as much like it can't hurt you it, it, it won't do you anything it's just fear and i think the underlying fear of it's like the fear of loss of control or maybe even death so maybe also look at the root of your um um fear because it's not falling asleep like you're not like that's not the the, the root of the problem like for fear of such a manifestation of uh anxiety in general so Yes, and when you said that, like something just came to me, which is like, uh, ultimately, it is 
it, I think you're right. It's ultimately like the fear of losing control. And then when you see like, I have no control, then that is both scary, but also liberating, right? Yeah. Very well. Well, I think, uh, yeah, this was so helpful to talk about this. So uh, I'll just say thanks so much for coming on, Marina, and, uh, and please be in touch. Thanks for having me. Okay. Bye now.